Well, welcome back to the shop and to the channel. In the last episode, we got most of the machining done on this adapter plate. But I still have some more machining to do. But before I can do that, I have to make some other parts. Next, I want to go ahead and machine up the locating fixture that will help locate this plate into the center of the rotary table. This isn't an absolutely necessary piece, but it will certainly make putting that chuck on or the plate on in the exact center of the rotary table a lot easier. I just have a piece of mystery metal here from the scrap bin chucked up into the lathe and we'll start with facing it. With the piece faced, I'm now turning down the diameter of the entire piece to uh, one inch and 375 thousandths. I'm machining about an inch and a half length of material here. Seems to be a section of this material that might be a little bit harder than the other piece. It was giving me an awful lot of chatter and the finish looks horrible. I'm going to go ahead and slow down my feed rate. Maybe that will help. hundred thousandths depth of cut for my little lathe is probably pushing its limits. I think that's why I'm getting so much chatter, but for the purpose of this part, I'm going to just send it. Checking my dimension here with just a set of digital calipers until I get close. I'm getting close to my dimension here. I'm switching out from the CCMP insert to this TMGG insert. These were 
recommended by Maddie from Maddie's Workshop as giving a really good surface finish. Although I think for this particular piece of stock, I'm not getting as good of a surface finish as I think I could because I've certainly gotten better on other material. Now that I'm getting down to the final dimension here, I'll check it here with the micrometer. And if that reads the way I expect it to, I'll use the bore in the adapter plate to be positive. And that is a perfect fit. It's exactly what I wanted. Nice slip fit. With a larger diameter turned to size, I can go ahead now and turn down the smaller diameter. The rotary table that I have has a 7 8 inch through hole, no taper in it, so this is a straight shank. So that does mean I need to take a full half of an inch off of the diameter. I decided I am going to have a little bit of fun here and see what this little lathe can do with some carbide inserts. This first pass is a hundred thousandths off the diameter so fifty thousandths step the cut uh, i think we'll go ahead and do that again i'll switch over to that tngg insert again getting a little bit better finish on the smaller diameter it's probably related to surface feet permitted i'm sure um, take a quick measurement here and see how close we are. This should be my final pass. And instead of measuring it with a micrometer, we'll just go ahead and pick up the rotary table and bring it over to the lathe and see how it fits onto that pin. And it fits right on. It's a little bit of a looser fit than I would like. Maybe I'll remake this part sometime in the future, but for now, I think this will be okay. I do want to make sure that that edge is undercut just so that it will sit flat on the top of the rotary table. And unfortunately, I didn't have quite enough stick out, so I'm going to have to loosen the chuck and pull it out in order to cut it off. I'm going to lose my concentricity, but that's okay. This is going to get turned around in the chuck and faced off. It doesn't have to be perfect here. Uh, I am going to put the lathe in back here and run it nice and slow. I've never had a ton of luck cutting off with this lathe. I get a lot of chatter. Um, so I just have to take it slow and use a lot of lubrication.
the next operation is going to require that I get the rotary table centered over the spindle. So I have it clamped down to the mill table and I'm using this coaxial indicator to get it dialed in um, as close as I can be. This doesn't have to be exact but I'd like it to get it within a thousandth of an inch of center. Well with the table now centered under the spindle I can insert my locating pin. I'm going to mount the adapter plate to the rotary table with some T-nuts I had made a while ago. Um, but I am going to be machining the circumference of that adapter plate. So I want to get it up off of the surface of the rotary table with a couple of parallels. And this is partly where I began to realize that I machined these holes too far out from the center of the adapter plate. I should have moved these in probably another quarter of an inch, maybe three-eighths of an inch. Because you'll notice there how far that T-nut is sticking out from the rotary table and how it interferes with the table clamp. I'm going to definitely have to machine some new T-nuts, but I think in the interim, in order to keep this project moving, I'm just going to remove those table clamps off of the rotary table so I can finish this project. With a one quarter inch four flute carbide end mill in the spindle, I'm raising up the knee here to get ready to machine this circumference. I move the saddle in roughly four inches or so until I get to the what I think is the <coughs> maximum offset here of the adapter plate. And instead of sitting there spinning on this wheel by hand, I think I'm going to try and cheat and use a socket and a drill driver to rotate the part. Well, we'll get the spindle here going at a good 2800 RPM or so. And we'll move the table out until we just start to touch off and we'll start machining this little by little. I didn't get that center hole quite in the middle so it is quite a bit offset but that's okay I kind of planned for that.
I am completing this last pass by hand um, because my drill died. I think it overheated. Um, and those chips are hot, which is why I'm wearing gloves. using a chamfering bit here to put a nice heavy chamfer on the circumference. I'm going to be machining off the top of this to get it flat and I want to make sure that I end up with something that um, is going to be deep enough and also to help with a little bit of the tool pressure as that carbide insert comes across it in the fly cutter. I'm going to go ahead and use the fly cutter now to flatten this other surface. I've removed the parallels and mounted the adapter plate straight to the top of the rotary table. But before I do, I want to reinstall the table clamps just to make sure that the rotary table doesn't move during this operation. It looks like I'm going to have to take at least a couple of passes here because it's not very parallel to with the other side of the of the adapter plate.
I really do like the finish that the fly cutter delivers here on this steel. Really happy with how this feels. I'm just going to use a file here to deburr the edges. The fly cutter does have a tendency to leave a burr on the trailing edge. I have the adapter plate now flipped upside down on the mill table with some 1-2-3 blocks and some toe clamps. I need to counterbore the mounting holes for the chuck. I have a 4 flute 5 8 inch high speed steel end mill in the spindle. I'm just going to line these up by eye. I'm going to bore these to a depth of a little less than 3 8 of an inch. I did take the mounting bolts I have for these and took a little bit off the face of them so they're not as deep. If I made them as deep as they needed to be, I would have very little material left in the adapter plate. Well, I'll finish these counter bores and then I think we're going to go ahead and wrap this video up. Uh, a lot of work here done. A lot of work left to do for such a simple tool. Well, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And there's some other links down in the description how you could support this channel so that we can continue to make this kind of content. Again... Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.